Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today is a little bit of a fun video. Today I am going to be, how will we say, making a tier list of all of the tributes of the 74th annual Hunger Games. Now I've always wanted to make a video like this. In this one I have five tiers for the tributes of Katniss's Hunger Games. The top tier is called Victor's Village and this is going to be a tribute that I feel has the best potential to win their entire Hunger Games. This is somebody who I feel has what it takes to make it all the way to the Victor's Village from whatever district they come from. The second tier I have here is called Final Day. This is somebody who has the potential to make it to the final day of their games, but maybe just not enough potential to make it into the Victor's Village. This isn't someone I think that could win the whole games, but they could probably get extremely far into the games. The next category I have here is called no sponsors. This means that the tribute isn't terrible, but they're not even good enough to really get sponsors. They're kind of in that weird middle ground. The, tri the, uh, the category below that, the tier below that is called bloodbath. These are people who would die on the first day in the cornucopia bloodbath. Now, this is pretty much just kind of useless tributes, tributes that just are like weak or they make bad choices or they're just terrible. And the last tier at the bottom is Extra Body. This is a tribute who we see basically nothing about them in the movie, they're nothing about them in the book. They don't even, maybe don't even appear in a lot of these scenes. We don't see them in the training scenes, we don't see them in the book, we don't see them in the you know, the arena scenes, they just are not there at all. They're literally just an extra in the movie. They're literally just an extra body. They're somebody who we know so little about, we can't even form a guess of an opinion about them. So, let's get into it. The first one we have here is Kato. Kato, obviously, you know, he is uh, in the Victor's Village, of course. Kato, and obviously this is spoilers if you have not seen The Hunger Games. Um, I'm letting you right, know right now, there are many a spoiler in this video. Kato obviously made it to the tail end. He almost, very nearly almost won the whole games by himself. Kato is powerful, he's strong, he knows how to wield a weapon, he has a sword, he killed people with his bare hands, he's that powerful. You know, he he's ruthless, he's brutal, you know, and he's physically imposing. He obviously is in the top tier, Victor's Village. Next we have here is Thresh. Thresh, definitely Victor's Village. It's very similar to Kato. Thresh is physically imposing. He knows how to wield a weapon. He's resourceful. He scares a lot of the other tributes and for good reason. He is a loner, which means he doesn't have anybody else slowing him down. That was his tactic. He's very powerful. He too also killed people with his bare hands, as we've seen in the book. He is just very powerful. Next one is Rue. Now Rue, she, hmm, no sponsors or final day. I'm gonna say Rue would be in final day. Now, if she had not teamed up with Katniss, I think she would have survived longer. So Rue's tactic was to stay up in the trees. And even while Katniss was unconscious, even before they formed an alliance, Rue had stayed up in the trees. She knew where all the other tributes were for the most part. When Katniss asked her about it, she said, oh, the PETA is here, the, the careers are here. She didn't know where everybody was, but she knew where a lot of she, it's like she was keeping tabs on certain people while remaining out of sight. You know, she her tactic was working for her so far. I mean, I don't know if she would have run out of food or something like that, but she also seemed very resourceful like Thresh. So I feel like if, if she hadn't teamed up with Katniss, she would have made it to the final day. Like she could make it to the very the end. I don't think she would win because she is very weak. She's a little girl, but and she's not proficient with any weapons. 
I mean, she had a slingshot, but that's not gonna do much against a great sword or a curved blade or a professional archer. So yeah, she makes it to the final day, I think, but she is just not, she just doesn't have it in her to win unless by some kind of a fluke. Katniss, she is goaded. She is, of course, in the Victor's Village. She is the actual winner of the games and for good reason, she absolutely carries. She was just very powerful. I don't feel like I need to say too much. You know, she's resourceful, she's intelligent. She is athletic. I mean, she knows how to hunt. She knows how to swim. She knows how to climb trees. She's comfortable outside. She's comfortable in nature. She has a lot of survival skills for outdoors that nobody else really has. She's also extremely deadly and very proficient with a bow. She's also not small. She is probably, I would even say she's, she, I think she's even taller than almost all the other female tributes. So she's not even small physically. So yeah, definitely Victor's Village 100%. PETA is, hmm, I will put him in, uh, I'll put him in final day. If PETA was not teamed up with Katniss, if he was by himself, um, I think he would make it to the final day. Yes, in the movie, I know he was like dying, but that was because he teamed up with their careers as a strategy to save Katniss. But hypothetically speaking, if he was really just on his own, I think he would make it to the final day because he has um, extreme camouflage skills. Although he's not really, he's just not on the same level as Kato, Thresh, Katniss. He's, uh, he's a bit soft and although he has, he can kill and we did see him do that in the, his games, he just, He's just not ruthless. He's not brutal. He is very, very strong. If it came down to a battle of strength between him and Kato or him and Thresh, maybe. But as far as I know, he's not proficient with any kind of weapon in the slightest. And if any one of these people who are just as strong as him has a weapon, to me, he's kind of done for. Now, next is this girl. She is definitely extra body. This is the female from District 10. She she actually, if I'm not mistaken, she only appears, the only time she appears in the movie is in the tribute parade. I don't think she, I don't think she appears in a single um, training room scene, training center. She doesn't appear in that entire scenes at all, as far as I know, nor does she appear like, I don't remember any scenes with her in them in the training center, nor is she in any scenes in the arena. She is just an extra in the movie. Next, the boy from 10. I hate, and also just a minor complaint. Everyone else, they they have like a normal full like body, like glamour shot in his. It's like, it was weirdly cropped to where the top of his head is like at the top of the picture. So. Right here, you can't even see his face. Anyway, this is the District 10 male, the boy from 10. He is in no sponsors. He had a, he was 18 years old. He had a bad leg, as Katniss puts it. Now, for somebody who had a bad leg, he actually survived several days into the game. He survived the bloodbath. He was on his own. Certainly did not have any sponsors because he was physically injured before the games even started but uh he did last several days into the game and uh in spite of all of his disadvantages and uh yeah so he's clearly resourceful he clearly is smart because he did survive pretty far into the games even on his own even with an injury at, to, right at the offset but he's not making it to the final day he's alone and he is injured to start off with. And what, it's one of his legs that are injured, which means he probably can't even run if he needed to flee. So he's not totally useless, but he's not making it should he come into a one-on-one -on -one fight, I imagine. At least with somebody who potentially, you know, would get the best of him. So no, he's not get, getting any sponsors, but he is making it out of the bloodbath because he at least has the 
resourcefulness to last several days in the arena on his own in spite of being injured. This is the boy from nine. The male, male tribute from nine, putting him in the bloodbath category. He attacks Cadmus during the bloodbath scene. Um, this is the only time we really get to even get a good look at him, and he is immediately killed by Clove. Yeah, he just didn't seem like he knew what he was doing. Went after Katniss with an axe, and you know, that was that. Next is the female from Nine. Definitely an extra body. Oh, also up here in the Victor's Village, before I get any further, Katniss is first on this. Then I would put Kato, then Thresh. And the only reason Kato, I feel like they're evenly matched as far as strength. I'm gonna put Kato above Thresh because Kato is more ruthless than Thresh. Thresh has been shown to be at least a little bit, like he spared Katniss the one time, you know, he, and he wasn't, he wasn't as cold-blooded as Kato. So I'm putting Kato above Thresh for final day. I'm putting Rue above Peta, because Peta, although camouflage, he'd probably be, I imagine he'd be on the ground. And I feel like Rue is harder to catch than Peta. If it came down to them working alone, I feel like we would see Peta before we would see Rue. At least an enemy. So I'm putting her above him. Extra body category, it doesn't really matter the order because they're all just extras in the movie. This girl, the female from District 8, Definitely bloodbath. She, in the movie, she did survive past the bloodbath, but she, she was killed in the games for making an utterly idiotic choice, which was having a fire lit at night. Obviously, that's the, her mentor's fault. He was not there for her. He did not help her. But I'm sorry, that was a really dumb decision. It got you killed by the careers or attempted to be killed by the careers. It was actually Peta who finished her off. You know, which I don't know why they didn't, um, they didn't show that in the movie, but it was actually Peta who killed her. But he was working with the careers at that time. But yes, and she was killed because of a really dumb decision. And so for being a really dumb tribute, you're gonna go in the bloodbath category, I'm sorry. The male from District 8, her district partner, also in the bloodbath category. We didn't, I didn't. I don't really remember seeing much of him in the um, in the movie, but he. Well, oh, oh yeah, but I do remember seeing him in the training center, and he fell off the monkey bars and like injured his leg or something, his ankle or something. And I'm like, I don't know how useless you have to be to sustain an injury in the training center when nobody else is. Like these are perfectly controlled environment. It's climate controlled. There are no uncertain variables here. You're just messing around to do whatever you want. You could just sit there the whole time and you manage to injure yourself on monkey bars. You're kind of useless. You're in the bloodbath category. A female from District uh, 7. Extra body. She's like, well, I'm sorry, bloodbath. I remember seeing her in the movie grappling with somebody over a backpack. That's more than I can say for these girls in the extra body category. So she's definitely going in bloodbath. Um, the male from <sighs> hmm I'm gonna put him in no sponsors the male from seven I'm, I'm gonna be generous with this um, he if I remember correctly memory serves he had attacked Thresh with a javelin um, Thresh is strong and fast and he was able to knock this guy out of the way as he continued on his way but if Thresh but if that boy had attacked, like, say, anybody in this category, the bloodbath category, or anybody in extra body, I feel like he probably would have been able to defeat them, or at least impale them. And that's not entirely useless to me. He's, and yes, this boy right here in the blood, in the bloodbath category did attack Katniss. He, he wasn't even aware of his surroundings. Like, I don't know, he just, you know, actually, you know what? I'm gonna put him in the bloodbath category because I just thought about it. Although maybe in front of this boy. Because he actually 
I don't think about it. I think she was the most useless out of that whole category. You know, he he did attack somebody just like this boy did, and he attacked somebody who was much more physically imposing than him. So why would you go after somebody way bigger than you? In the in the cornucopia, that's crazy. But it's not a smart decision. This is a female from uh, seven. Extra body. Um, Jason from District Six. Bloodbath. Um, he wasn't. Uh, I don't really remember seeing what came of him in the bloodbath itself. I'm gonna put him here. Kato was the leader of the careers. Basically, he he clearly was a career. Kato was way bigger than this boy, and this boy had the gall, the audacity to threaten Kato, saying, telling Kato, "You don't know who you're messing with." After Kato accused. Jason of stealing his knife, which was really rude, but it's neither here nor there. But yeah, you don't, why would you threaten a career? Like going into the games, you're going into the game solo, mind you, and you, the whole career is as a pack are gonna try to kill you. And then you wanna threaten the most physically imposing career out of all of them? No, definitely in the bloodbath category. Foxface, final day. She was clever, she was cunning, she was sneaky. And she did take risks, but all her risks were calculated. They weren't, she wasn't risking stuff for no reason. She took a huge risk uh, during the feast. She hid inside of the cornucopia so that she could be the first one to bolt out of there with her district bag, the bag for five. It was a crazy thing to do, but it was very smart. And she gambled and the gamble paid off. We still don't know what was in the bag. She made it to the end. We don't know if she ate those poison berries on purpose or if it was on accident. But either way, when she did die, she was trailing Katniss and Peeta and neither of them were even aware of that, which is more surprising and shocking for Katniss as somebody who's used to listening out for things in the wilderness. She makes it to the final day. Um, but clearly she did not make it all the way to the end because in the book, I remember she was emaciated. She was extremely starved. So that means she was not resourceful enough to get food on her own. So she would not have made it to the final day. I mean, to the Victor's Village. This boy, the male from District... Five. Um, he was like an extra body. I don't even remember him in the bloodbath at all. Female from District... Hmm. I'm gonna put her in final day. And this might be shocking because she had almost no role in the movie, but people forget she was a career. In the book, she was right, right alongside Kato, Clove, Glimmer, and Marvel. She is a career. She was killed at the same time as Glimmer by Katniss when Katniss dropped that tracker jacker nest on the careers when they were sleeping. She, and in the movie, she did not survive the bloodbath, but she was shown like grabbing a backpack. She was shown cutting somebody's leg off or something. Like she was crazy. And she didn't even have a name in the movie, which is crazy. Um, but yeah, she definitely, she's a career. She's making it to the final day. Um, let's see who we have here. This little boy, bloodbath. He's just so weak. And it's all like, he's just a child. And he should have been a career, but he was so weak, the careers didn't even let him go with them, even though he was from a career district. And he had the nerve to stay in the cornucopia when the fighting started and try to run out with stuff at the last second. That was just was a really bad decision. This girl, the female from District 3, definitely a bloodbath. We literally saw her laying on the ground after the bloodbath, after everything was concluded. Um, the boy from District 3, he's in the no sponsors category. I mean, he was intelligent. Actually, let me put him in front of this boy from 10. The boy from 3 was intelligent, very intelligent. He was able to talk to the careers out of killing him at some point because he got into an alliance with them, which they certainly would have just picked him off right away. So he was able to talk his way out of being killed by the careers. I'm sure he did not approach them. I'm sure he tried to reason with them. Once they found their way to him, I imagine he was smart enough to rewire all the mines 
which I don't even know like how long that would even take to do. Especially without machinery or like screwdrivers or anything. Like I don't know how that is even possible. But he did it. And he aligned himself with the most powerful people in the arena. Their careers. Although being a bad um, lookout that cost him his life. I don't think he would have made it to the final day. But I think he, he wasn't useless. Not at all. Not by a long shot. Now we have Glimmer. Glimmer. I will put her. Hmm. I really want to put her in no sponsors. I'm going to put her in final day. She, she was kind of dumb in the fact that she took, um, something illegal into the arena, which was her ring. If I'm not mistaken, her ring had, um, it was like a weapon. It was hit. It was secretly a weapon. I don't remember if it was poison or if it had like a little, like a little dagger inside of the ring or it was something like that. But it's been a while, but her tribute token was illegal and it was like taken from her. But so it makes me think she's not very smart because why would you try to make the game makers mad before you go into the arena? Maybe she was just arrogant, but it was really dumb. Also, but also she was like on the arm of Kato. And so I feel like, you know, if, if she's in his good graces, he might even protect her a little bit, which could make her go even further in the games. She'd not make it because Katniss ended her with tracker jackers. But I did see her making it pretty far. She did not seem to be proficient with any weapons. She seemed decent with the bow and arrow, but not very, very good. Not great. Not when it mattered. Now, I guess I'll... So, she, she, I think she would have made it to the final day just on the fact that she was a career. But she did not seem to be very useful in the movie. This girl got just as far as Glimmer did, and this girl did more damage. Well, actually, you know what? I'm going to put Glimmer in front of her because I saw Glimmer using multiple weapons in the movie. She used a bow and arrow and she looked like she stabbed somebody with like a knife or something in the bloodbath. This girl, I only saw her use one weapon in the movie. So I'm actually going to put Glimmer ahead of her. Next is Marvel. Marvel. Hmm. Hmm. He's either in the final day or Victor's Village. Marvel was much more dangerous than Glimmer. He he had the javelins or those spears or whatever. And he we saw in the training center, he was like dead on accurate. And uh, he's a long distance. I don't think grappling, I don't think he could take down Kato or Clove. He probably could take down Katniss. But, and these both, both Katniss and Marvel use long range weapons, but Katniss is much more longer range than him, I would say. And she had more arrows on him than he had of little spears. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave him in final day, but he's at the top of the list of final day. And lastly, Clove. Hmm. Hmm. Actually, hmm. Plus, you know, I thought about moving Marvel back up to Victor's Village, but I remember now I'm thinking back on it. He was actually kind of careless as well. He was a bit arrogant. You know, he didn't have food on him whenever Katniss killed him. He, 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 he wasn't even, he didn't even have food on him in anticipation of something going wrong. He was careless and he was sloppy. Final day. Clove, I'm definitely putting in Victor's Village. Clove was brutal. She was ruthless. She killed with precision. She was just, uh, she's, she was a menace. In the game, she was just a menace. She was, she's psychotic more than anything. She's, I would dare say she's the most psychotic tribute in the games. She was playing mind games. She was toying with her prey. That's more than I could say for any of anyone else. Yeah, she... I'm not going to put her above Thresh because he just has brute force against her. And because she was so focused on toying with Katniss, she was not aware of her surroundings. And she that's how she came to her untimely demise. These are my final rankings for the tributes of the 74th Annual Hunger Games. So I would say Katniss is the best, followed by Kato, Thresh, then Clove. 
and the worst are is here in the bloodbath category the extra bodies i don't really have much to say about them i have no recollection of them even in the movie honestly and they certainly were not even mentioned in the book either so i'm pretty confident with this list tell me if you would move anybody else around i'm pretty confident with this list though so uh, thank you for watching and uh I hope to see you in the next one where I rank all of the tributes from District 10. I mean, all the tributes from the 10th Hunger Games, which are the Hunger Games from the Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes. Yeah, so see you in that one and uh, take care.